Now to set the tone for this video, I wanted to show this tap handle I got at a junk sale for, I think, a dollar. It's one of these cast aluminum things, which of course we expect to be cheap. This didn't even make one quarter turn before completely failing. Hooray! Another little junk sorta of type project that's been in the back of my mind for a while is to repurpose this light from Ikea. I got this when I got my mini lathe and I was using it over the lathe for a number of months. It's called the Jans Joe, and it's pretty handy, but to be perfectly honest, the light it casts is kind of yellow and kind of harsh. Beyond that, if that doesn't bother you, it's a pretty neat flex arm light, and it's, it's nice and low profile and handy. And it's like 10 bucks, I think. So I'm going to mount it to my drill press, and it has these two studs in the bottom for its little sand-based stand, and I'm just going to mark up some aluminum here as a reinforcement plate. And this is just a piece of scrap. I think it's a quarter inch thick. We're going to drill some holes that I've measured out to correspond with the two studs in the bottom of the light. And this will serve as a reinforcement for the holes I'm going to put here in the belt guard tray on my drill press. Now I'm just taping it in place temporarily so I can get the holes started and lined up with each other. Now this, this is completely clear on the other side of this belt guard, but you do need to be careful if you're doing something like this because there are, you can see there are power cables in that vicinity. You're also drilling into one of your machines, so keep that in mind if you were to replicate this project. It's also sheet metal, so you can get your bit stuck like that. With everything in place, I can just put the screws in from the other side, which a little bit of monkeying around, getting around the belts and everything. And it's actually, the base itself is, is really solid. It actually kind of surprised me. I thought there would be more flex just in the base. However, here's where the rub comes in. This flex arm is really just designed to be held upright and not held at an angle like this. So the weight of the light pulls down pretty bad. It, it didn't want to stay in place. I put a magnet on top of my belt guard cover here to sort of hold it in place, but <laughs> it uh, it's one of those projects that it worked, but I don't know. B minus. I guess we'll see. More light on the drill press, but not the most ideal once again. So another issue I've been having is with this guy. I bought this when I bought the rest of the tooling uh, I, I purchased when I, I got my mill. And this is just from Shars, so it's, it's a pretty inexpensive import. It's the combination center finder and edge finder here. And this is the wiggler type. If, uh, if you aren't familiar, this, this spins in the call out of the mill, and uh, you, you can find the edge this way. What it's, my understanding, what it's supposed to do is start at the offset. Then, <laughs> as you get closer, it becomes more and more concentric. And then as you get... Uh, dead on, it's supposed to pop to the side, pop and and spin at one side. Now my issue with this, and I don't know if it's just my technique or if it's just an inexpensive, because it's an inexpensive and uh, low quality center finder, but I can't get that very positive pop to the side. It, uh, it feels like I have to go several thousands beyond where my, where this is just even with the edge, putting it, uh, putting it too far inward. So I don't know if that's my fault, or I mean, you know, I apparently I can get a Mitsutoyo one of these on Amazon for like eleven dollars. So I'm probably just gonna do that regardless. But uh, if if it's something, I'm 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 new to the mill, <laughs> I'm new to all the machining, but I'm still a little unfamiliar with the mill and a lot of the operations in it. So if it's, I've tried it a number of RPMs because I've looked this up online and I I can't I can't find. Uh, can't find an RPM that makes it do it, and I've oiled it and cleaned it. Uh, so, any thoughts on that? Just let me know. But I'm kind of stumped. So actually, there's an update on that. Um, this is now junked because the way this two-ended design seems to work, 
Well, it gets caught in the collet, so you can't pull it out without it stretching your spring. I tried using a variety of different soft items to push it out from the other side, but because this is a point, anything that you can get down down in the back of the end of an RA collet likes to push it off axis and make it catch even further. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. I'm ordering a new one at least. Should I get one of the electronic ones? Would a, uh, I know that you can find some for the $40 to $80 range that just have an electronic indicator that beeps you when it when it touches the edge. Should I just do that? Um, I, I mean, like I said, the Mitsutoy one's like $11. So I'll probably just go ahead and try that. But uh, that's really disappointing and I'm never gonna do the double-ended thing again. So. So another one of my cockamamie ideas in the interest of cheap and, well, more or less easy to come by uh, is this little set from our favorite Harbor Freight. And this is a, it's a, uh, you just call it a circular saw for a rotary tool. It's, so it's designed basically for like Dremels and the air grinders and things of like that, the pencil gr type grinders, the 1 8 inch shank type rotary tools. But these are pretty coarse teeth in here, and it, the whole set is like less than 10, well I think it's 10 bucks, and then you can get it with a coupon for 8 or something. So I thought, well, 8 bucks, I'll take a gamble and see if this could actually be chucked in a 1 8 inch collet on the mill and used as a stopgap uh, cockamamie slitting saw. Let's see. Okay, here's our universal scrap test dummy. This is uh, the same piece of aluminum you've probably seen me do all sorts of just farting around with. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn the mill on. I've got it in high gear. Let's see, got Z-axis locked. And I'm just gonna turn it all the way up. This is just aluminum, so we'll just do the full uh, 2200 here. I'm gonna touch off. You totally use this edge finder if I had one. Okay, there we go. Now, let's try uh, 20,000 deep. Oh, that's pretty cool. We go deeper. Let's try 40 this time. Not bad at all. We'll go back and this will be a nice spring pass climb cut style. Hey, that's pretty cool. That uh, actually worked really nicely. Uh, this is uh, the same the th same thing I tested my fly cutter on and actually you can see these uh, two prior cuts that I tried before doing it on camera just to make sure I didn't capture any explosions on camera but uh, that's a nice clean nice clean groove I uh, haven't tested the depth or anything yet uh, this is I don't have a <laughs> I don't have a use for this thing yet but uh, you know what let's try some steel let's just be daft and uh, see if this will cut some cold rolled Okay, so turn it into low gear and we'll back it down to. Let's go for a thousand ripples. Well, so there's a very non-scientific experiment or demonstration of concept, I guess, that this incredibly inexpensive glorified Dremel attachment here can be a, a I'm going to call it a non-precision slotting saw, slitting saw. Uh, so if you had a just a, a decorative or not super critical slot you needed to make, I imagine this would work. After cutting the aluminum, and I've got two cuts here, these are my off-camera test cuts and this one you saw. 
And then this one in the steel. Uh, it's feeling just as sharp as it was before, so that's good, I guess. It's supposed to be HSS, according to the according to the package and the very detailed description. It it seems to work. It comes with a bunch of these blades. I don't know. I'm not shilling for that place. I just think this is kind of neat. I have a thing that I can do now, if I need to do it. Just kidding, the torque of cutting steel caused the shank to just completely snap, so once again, remember how horrible freight stuff goes. Well, if that wasn't just a damn week of all kinds of silly, silly things going on in the shop, a lot of, a lot of lessons learned about tools and how you plan projects and cheap stuff in general, so whatever. It's been a good week otherwise. Two weeks ago, we welcomed our second daughter into my family, and I could not be a happier dad. So that has been a very nice, very nice way to celebrate failures in the shop is to go get love and cuddles from, from my two girls and my wife who's home. I also wanted to announce that I've started a Patreon. Now, I love, I love my subscribership here on the channel and you guys have supported me so much with positive comments and really good views. A lot of, a lot of good community has been built that I'm just incredibly proud of and, and honestly just astonished that you guys have come along with me in, here in my little garage shop. But as my resources continue to grow, I could I realized that I could grow them at a faster rate and provide actual more bigger projects for you guys to come watch. So for as little as I think I set the minimum to a dollar a month, you can come over on Patreon. I'm going to offer some more content there, just kind of random projects as well as vloggy stuff and updates and any other kind of tips, things of that nature that I, I can share with you guys. I'll have over there on Patreon, so you get something for helping support me. There's more content for you providing your, your help. So I appreciate that. Go check it out, and uh, thank you for watching this, and I'll see you next time.